Well, good morning and welcome to Morning Mail. Today is Tuesday, May the 10th, 2022. So good to be with you this morning. Trust that your day has gotten to a, gotten off to a good start. Certainly has here, at least as far as I'm concerned, in Hereford. Great to have you with me this morning as we continue looking at Paul's writings to the first letter that he wrote to the young man, Timothy. We're in chapter 3 looking at the qualifications of elders and deacons. We'll get right to that in just a moment. But let's begin, first of all, with a word of prayer. Gracious and loving Father, thank you again so much for the beautiful day that you brought to us today, for the past night's rest, and your keeping us and being with us through the night. Father, I pray that this day will be used in your service, that we'll look for our and take advantage of opportunities to speak for you, to tell others about Jesus, to influence them for you, towards you. Thank you so much for the Bible, for the revelation that you made by your Holy Spirit to those men who wrote down those words and that have been preserved and kept for us. May we always be students of your word. May we always seek to strive and to do more of what you reveal and tell us about there in the Bible. Thank you so much for Jesus and his sacrifice. Father, now I thank you for those who join in with us every day and listen to these uh, little devotionals as we talk about different things from your word. Thank you for this opportunity. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, on yesterday's morning mail, we began looking at the qualifications which Paul gives in 1 Timothy chapter 3 for men who are selected to lead a local congregation of the Lord's church as overseers or elders. Now, I did not mention it yesterday, but these qualifications are also a challenge to every male member of the Lord's church to stretch themselves to become the kind of man depicted in these verses. More important than being selected as an elder or as a deacon is becoming the kind of man God can use in his service. Now this morning I want to continue looking at those qualifications for elders that Paul gives here in chapter 3. So open your Bibles with me, if you would, and, and let's turn to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, and let's read verses 4 through 7. Paul writes, He must be one who manages his own household well, keeping his children under control with all dignity, but if a man does not know how to manage his own household, how will he take care of the church of God? And not a new convert, so that he will not become conceited and fall into the condemnation incurred by the devil. And he must have a good reputation with those outside the church, so that he will not fall into repro reproach and the snare of the devil. Household. That word denotes simply a house or a dwelling. Now here in this passage, it's used in, in the sense of a family. The word manage literally means stand before. It has reference to a position of leadership, to being at the head of. And the word translated rule, or the word rather is translated rule, later in 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. But elders are not to lord it over those allotted to their charge. See 1 Peter 5, verse 3. Neither fathers nor elders should demand unthinking obedience from those under their leadership. 
showing little concern for their needs or their desires. Now the import of uh, here, the import here is not limited to giving directives, but includes also the attributes of showing concern for and caring for others. This is apparent from the latter part of verse 5, which mentions taking care of those being led. Well, how can we know if a man manages his own household well? Well, one way is to look at his relationship with his wife. Does he respect and care for her? Does she respect him as the head of the home? The way specified in our text is to look at his children. Are they under control with dignity? Now that phrase under control comes from a Greek word that's translated submissiveness back in chapter 2 and verse 11 here in 1 Timothy. An elder's children should not be out of control. They should be well behaved. Now Paul says they are to be under control with dignity. Dignity refers to an appropriate response to one worthy of respect. This word could indicate that the father is to treat his children with respect. See Ephesians 6 verse 4 and Colossians 3 verse 21. In the context here, it probably refers to the respect children are to have for their father. Their submission should not be a grumbling obedience for fear of punishment, but should be an expressive, an expression of genuine esteem for the Father. Denny Petrillo summarized this quality in these words in his commentary on First and Second Timothy and Titus, page 39. He said, quote, The Father's firmness makes the children obey. His wisdom makes it natural to obey. And his love makes it pleasurable to obey. End quote. Now the reason for the emphasis on an elder's family is given in verse 5. If a man does not know how to manage his own household, how will he take care of the church of God. The home is the training ground and the proving ground for leadership in the Lord's church. The principle here is similar to that expressed by Jesus in his parable of the talents, in which the trustworthy servants were told, quote, you were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things, end quote. See Matthew 25, verses 21 and 23. Now, we must not miss those words, take care of the church of God, in verse 5 here. Take care of is the same phrase that Luke used as he recorded Jesus' parable of the Good Samaritan, where the Good Samaritan took the injured man to the inn and told the innkeeper, Take care of him, Luke 10.35. Now those words encompass whatever is needed. Taking care of the church, supplying what the local congregation needs, is God's purpose for providing leadership. Now as we previously noted, the word elder itself implies a measure of maturity. The next qualification underlines the importance of spiritual maturity. Verse 6 begins, not a new convert. A new convert is a translation of the Greek word from which we get our word neophyte. It is a compound word that literally means a new plant or 
newly planted one. Now Paul gave the reason for this concern in the remainder of verse 6. He said, not a new convert, so that he will not become conceited and fall into the condemnation incurred by the devil. Now the word translated conceited is an interesting verb. It has the figurative sense of be cloud, delude. Some of us have been acquainted with individuals whose minds became declouded and or be clouded and deluded by too much success too soon, often with tragic results. Now, the Greek text that's translated the condemnation incurred by the devil is literally the condemnation of the devil. Now, this could refer to an elder's being condemned because he succumbs to the devil's devices, but it probably alludes to the condemnation the devil personally incurred because of his pride as the New American Standard Bible that I read from illustrates and indicates. If this is the case, this is one of the few statements in the Bible regarding the devil's original fall. A familiar proverb comes to mind. Pride goes before destruction. Proverbs 16, verse 18a. Now, the list of qualifications of elders began with a good reputation, and it closes with the same. The first requirement, above reproach, back in verse 2, probably has to do with a good reputation within the local congregation, while this last one in verse 7a has to do with a man standing in the community. He must have a good reputation with those outside the church. Now, this is not to say that he compromises the truth so all men speak well of him, Luke 6, verse 26. Rather, it reflects the way he treats others, whether or not he is a man of his word and other matters that affect the way people think of him. Dick Marcier, writing an article entitled, Who Can Be an Elder in the East Side Church of Christ uh, Bulletin from Midwest City, Oklahoma, October 21st, 1979, phrased it this way, quote, He is so well thought of in the community that if someone were to attack his character, no one would believe it, end quote. Now, Paul also gave a reason for this qualification so that he will not fall into reproach and the snare of the devil, verse 7b. Reproach comes upon a person because of an act that results in disgrace. An elder often has a high profile in the community. If he falls into reproach, it not only hurts him, but also brings reproach on the local congregation and does damage, often irreparable damage, to the cause of Christ. The snare of the devil is the trap set by the devil to try to ensnare the church leader. See 1 Timothy 6 verse 9 and 2 Timothy 2 verse 26. If the devil can discredit the message, or excuse me, if he cannot discredit the message, he does his best to discredit the messenger. Now, we're going to have to stop here for today. This is a good break in our, in our text. On tomorrow's morning mail, we'll continue here in 1 Timothy 3 as we look at the qualifications Paul gives as he now shifts from elders to deacons. Hope you can be with me then. Let's close our time this morning with a word of prayer. Loving and gracious Father, again we come before you in gratitude for all you do for us, for the Bible that you've given to us, 
And Father, for these qualifications, these directions that you, by inspiration of the Spirit, gave to Paul, that he wrote down so that we might know what type of men we ought to strive to be, those of us who are, are men in the Lord's church. We may not all ever be selected to serve as an elder, but we must and should nevertheless strive to meet these qualifications just simply as good Christian men in the best way that we can. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your wisdom and your strength that we have from you that we might serve and do your will. I pray this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I trust that you're going to have a great Tuesday. And Lord willing, we'll be back here tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock for more Morning Mail.